What is the cost of paradise? The white sand beaches of Boracay Island used to welcome over 2 million tourists every single year. But back in 2018, it all became too much. Consistently ranked one of the most beautiful beaches in the world, the island of Boracay here in the Philippines is finally reopening. World famous Boracay Island in the Philippines was drowning in rubbish. One of the country's great natural treasures, Boracay Beach, was shut down due to massive sewage pollution. After years of neglect and wild beach parties, the government took an unprecedented step. I will close Boracay. Boracay is a cesspool. It's destroying the environment of the Republic of the Philippines and creating a disaster coming. The entire island was closed down for six months of rehabilitation and cleanup. But what is it like now? Boracay is a tiny island off the northern coast of Panay. And a few months after its grand reopening, we went to see what the island had become. The neighbouring port of Cataclan is the main gateway to Boracay. And on the journey over, we started to see the signs of its new approach to tourism. It's estimated that around $20 million was spent on the cleanup alone. And really, there was no way of knowing if the tourists would return right away. These days, only 19,000 tourists are allowed onto the island each day. And we were just two of them, heading over there for the very first time. There's a trend amongst YouTubers in the Philippines where they react to the new Boracay, even though most of them never saw what it was like before now. So instead of sort of trying to do a direct comparison to what it's like before, I thought I'd just walk along the beach and share with you some of my first impressions about what it's like to be here and pay attention to what it looks like they may have changed. So almost as soon as we arrived, we headed straight to the coast to get our first look at that famous beach, where it looks like a lot has changed. So here we are on White Beach for the first time, and the sand definitely lives up to its name. It's very fine, very bright, and it just stretches on forever in the distance. The beach here is over four kilometers long, so long that it's split into three sections known as stations. Obviously the weather isn't great today, it's very very cloudy, very overcast, but you can still see just how blue the water is as well. There's a long promenade that goes all the way along the beach, all through the three stations here. And it's all lined with shops, restaurants, cafes. It's a real holiday destination here, as expected. Boracay's reopening came with a lot of new laws and rules for tourists. There is no smoking or drinking allowed on the beach. No fire dancing, no pets, no loud music, and no furniture allowed on the sand. You also won't find any single-use plastics in the coffee shops or restaurants. This has been a real culture shift on the island that seems to have been embraced by both tourists and locals. But one of the major differences since they introduced all of these new rules is that none of the restaurants or bars are allowed to encroach onto the beach itself. Whereas before you're allowed to drink your cocktails while watching the sunset on the sand, that's no longer allowed. And to be honest, I've got to say, the beach seems really, really clean. So obviously something's working. Station three was pretty chilled out when we were there, but the station next door was a completely different story. 
you definitely know when you get into station two, it gets visibly a lot, a lot busier. The good news for the tourism authorities is that the six month closure doesn't seem to have put tourists off coming here. In fact, I think it's generated even more interest with people just like us wanting to see the island's new look. And that famous nightlife can still be found when the sun goes down. You won't find any more crazy beach parties on the sand, but the clubs and bars were still very crowded with people. And of course, one of the island's most incredible sights is still as amazing as ever. One of the most iconic sights in Boracay is watching the sunset over the sea. And I'm very excited to see it for the first time. It's just about an hour away. We're in position. And it's looking awesome already. I love these blue sailboats. Such an iconic thing from Boracay. This might be the busiest beach I've ever seen. But the sunset is legit. And luckily for us, the next day, the clouds disappeared. When the sun is out, this beach is an absolute dream. It was the perfect day to take our first swim in the sea. And this crystal clear water was out of this world. It's hard to believe that this water was a darker shade of green only a few months before. We decided to walk as much of the beach as we could. From Station 3, we walked through the crowds of Station 2 before ending up in Station 1. It's definitely a lot quieter down here in Station 1. And this is by far the most beautiful stretch of the beach. But it's also going to cost you to stay here. This is where the big luxury resorts are. I completely get why people come here on holiday. It is an absolutely beautiful beach. There's every single comfort you could possibly want along the front. I'm gonna attempt something now that I never ever do and that's actually sunbathe. So let's, let's go down. Okay. Ah. Okay. No, no. boring. <sighs> Overall, Boracay definitely wouldn't be my first choice of destination to come on holiday. It's all a little bit too much for me, but I can definitely see why people come here. Not that I think what happened here was a good thing, it's just, I think it's got an opportunity to be a real example to other places around the world and in the Philippines that sustainable tourism is the way forward and it can still be a really popular place to come. Because what they're reclaiming with everything they're doing here is they're reclaiming the whole reason why people came to Boracay in the first place because of this beautiful, amazing beach with white sand and blue water. And if that goes away, then what is Boracay for? More recently, we've seen Thailand close down Maya Bay, and I have no doubt that more places will follow. The Philippines really gambled with this project, and they've come out the other side as a world leader and true example of how sustainable tourism can be done. 
thank you so much for watching this video. If you liked it, make sure you leave it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. And I'll see you next time for another Philippines adventure.